Let me ask you a question. If I give you a group of people and you have to motivate them to do a particular task, what will you do? Most likely, you're going to come up with two options. Number one, give them a reward. You'll say, well, pay them this much money or make them appear on TV and make them famous and they will be motivated to work. Or number two, you will say, give them a punishment. You can threaten an employee that they're going to lose their job or you can tell people that you'll take $500 from them if they fail. Well, this is the classic way of motivating ourselves and other people, which is called reward and punishment. But researchers at MIT who were studying human behavior found something that surprised everyone. They were conducting a study trying to determine what makes people motivated. They told people that there were three levels of reward. The first level was a very small reward. The second level was a slightly higher reward. And the third level was the highest amount of money. Here's what they found. For rudimentary tasks where very little brain activity was involved, for example, stacking boxes on top of each other or sorting documents, these levels worked amazingly. The more monetary reward, the better was the performance. But for tasks that involved even a little bit of cognitive skill, they found that more reward actually meant worse performance. For some reason, when people had to use their brains, no amount of money could actually motivate them to work better. Now, this type of motivation where you are told that if you do X, then you will get Y is known as extrinsic motivation. This is the kind of motivation that comes from outside of you. When you think to yourself, oh man, I really want to start this business because then I'll make a lot of money or I'll become high status and all the girls are going to like me. This is called extrinsic motivation. Now, according to Daniel Pink, who is the author of the book Drive, extrinsic motivation doesn't go very far. For example, once you have a basic amount of money in your bank account so that your basics are taken care of and you have a house and other basic things like electricity, things like money, stop being a good motivator. Apart from this, actually using extrinsic motivators can do more harm than good. In one experiment, they found that if people were actually paid to donate blood, the amount of people donating blood actually went down. This is because most people were donating blood so that they felt good about themselves. But once they started getting paid for it, they now felt that it was just a transaction and so they stopped being motivated enough to donate blood. External motivators also encourage cheating. Sometimes in big corporations, executives lie about the performance and hide important details of the company so that they can get their bonuses. And worst of all, once you get used to external motivation, it actually decreases the amount of intrinsic motivation that you have to do a particular task. Now, according to Daniel Pink, this intrinsic motivation is the key to solving our problems of motivation. So let's find out what it is. Intrinsic motivation is motivation that comes from inside of you. Daniel Pink divides people into two categories. Type X, the people that are motivated by external things, and type I, the people who are motivated by intrinsic things. While type X people can sometimes be very successful, over time they start to feel empty and they start feeling like none of their accomplishments are good enough and they always want more of everything more fame more status more money etc however type i people in the beginning maybe they don't earn as much money as the type x people but over a long period of time type i are almost always more successful and more importantly they're also more satisfied and happy we have to become more of the type i kind of people and there are actually three pillars to intrinsic motivation they are autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So number one is autonomy. Autonomy basically means independence. Research has shown that when employees are actually given independence in their work, they actually are more intrinsically motivated. For example, there was an Australian software company called Atlassian that used this in the best way possible. A lot of companies offer monetary reward to their employees to solve big problems, but Atlassian didn't do any of that. All they did was that they dedicated a whole day where they told their employees, hey, you probably have a lot of ideas that you want to implement in our company. Why don't you take the whole day without any supervision and work on your idea? And then the next day you show us what you made. After doing this, the company was able to solve a lot of problems that they hadn't been able to solve before. So how do we apply the concept of autonomy to our own lives? Well, you have to find ways of feeling independent in whatever it is that you're trying to do. 
Maybe at work you can have a conversation with your boss to let you experiment with a new idea. Or maybe you're in school and instead of just following the textbooks they give you, you can do a little bit of research on your own and use the internet to learn new things. The point isn't to make big waves wherever you are and show that you're all independent. The point is to just feel a little bit independent in how you do your work yourself so that you can be intrinsically motivated. Number two is mastery. In the world of software engineering, oftentimes a lot of the best written code is open source. Open source software is usually written by engineers that are writing code on their own for free, just for the sake of building something. In fact, most of the times these open source softwares are actually better than the software made by employees being paid thousands of dollars. And that's because open source coders are motivated by mastery. They care about their skill. They want to reach their maximum potential. Think about it. If you are motivated by how good you can get at a particular skill, then you're going to keep working at that skill until you're really, really good. So how do we apply this to our own lives? Whatever it is that you're doing, try and become the best at that skill. If you're playing the guitar, try and learn as many new things as you can. Don't think about how many people you're going to impress or how famous you're going to be. Just think about how good you can become at that skill. The fame and the crowd will come on their own. In my own example, I don't motivate myself for making these videos by the amount of views I get or what people say about my videos. I motivate myself by trying to improve my videos. And point number three is purpose. All human beings have a desire to be a part of something that is larger than themselves. This explains why people join gangs or they cheer for their sports teams and sometimes even get in fights because of that. This is a very important factor in human motivation but most companies completely miss this. Most companies make their employees feel like they're just another cog in the machine. And the employees don't really feel that their existence makes the world a better place in any way. However, lately there's a growing trend of businesses like large software companies that make their employees participate in social causes to help people in other countries or plant trees, etc. And this is the right way to go. When people feel that their work is actually making the world a better place, they're more likely to be intrinsically motivated. To motivate ourselves in this way, we also need to have a large purpose that defines our life. You have to have one goal in your life that is so big that it automatically makes you move even if you don't feel like it. Your purpose could be just to become a doctor and heal people in your area, or it could be to become an astronaut and help your country reach the skies, or make so much money that you can remove poverty from the world. And keep in mind, this purpose shouldn't be something that you're saying just for the sake of it. It should be something that actually rings true in your heart. Only then will you feel motivated from the inside. So remember, extrinsic motivation like reward and punishment does work for simple tasks. So you can use that kind of a thing to get yourself to go to the gym or clean your house. However, when the task involves using your brain even a little bit, then you need the three intrinsic pillars of motivation, which are autonomy, mastery, or having a a big purpose. You should watch this video to learn how you can take small steps that lead to massive results. That's all for now and thanks for watching.